Oh dear lord. <laughs> this is gonna take forever. I don't have time for this. This is only like a 15 second clip. Hello there. We're back with another video. And today, I just want to answer one question. Can we edit an entire video in full 1080p on this little guy? For those of you who have no idea what they're looking at right now, this right here is a Raspberry Pi. Specifically, it's a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, released in about 2015. It may not be the most powerful thing in the world, but let me tell you, this thing can still do quite a lot. This little guy is sporting a 64-bit ARM Cortex A53 quad-core processor clocked at 1.2 gigahertz, one gigabyte of RAM, Bluetooth 4.0, and onboard 802.11n Wi-Fi. It also has a slew of ports, including a 40-pin GPIO, Ethernet, four USB 2.0s, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, HDMI, micro USB port for power, and a micro SD card slot. Now, it's gonna be questionable whether or not those kind of specs will be able to handle 1080p video editing, but we're gonna try it anyway. Why is it that every time I try a new video, someone's doing something outside? <sighs> Just grinds my gears. Just to have something to compare to, we'll be editing the exact same video on both the Del Vostro 270 and my trusty old HP ProBook. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Let's plug in the Pi and turn it on. So, I think we're gonna stick with Raspbian, or now known as Raspberry Pi OS on this thing, mainly because anything else is very, very unstable on Raspberry Pi. Plus, it's just convenient and really easy to use anyway. And it was specifically made for the Pi, so it runs phenomenally. Um, is, is this gonna go? Hello? The power light is on, but it's not displaying anything. Hmm. That's concerning. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I ended up pulling out this Vizio smart TV here um, because it's either the HDMI to DVI adapter isn't liking the output of the Raspberry Pi or whatever resolution that I set for the Raspberry Pi is not supported by the monitor. So I just figured, hey, let's just go with the TV and hopefully that should iron out some issues. So let's try this again, once more with feeling. Power it on. Hey, there we go. That's what I wanted to see. And we should be booting into Raspberry Pi OS. And get some sweet, sweet video editing done. All right, here we are. So there's not a whole lot of options of video editing software for Raspberry Pi OS, so really any operating system that runs on Raspberry Pi. But one that I did find that might work is called, let's see where it is, KDEN Live. Another option was to use OpenShot, but I don't think you can actually install it on Raspbian, which is kind of a shame because I've used it before and it's actually quite nice. It does take a really long time to load though. Now, the only thing I am worried about a little bit is that we only have one gigabyte of RAM, so that might be a problem. But, we shall see. So we got quite a few options for um, video effects, audio effects, video transitions. It's quite a versatile piece of software considering it's <laughs> free. All right, let's get started. So, I've got my trusty old SD card to USB adapter, which we'll be using to get the footage off my camera onto the Raspberry Pi. Let's plug it in. 
And it should be coming up here. Yep, there it is. So let's not even bother with the file manager. Let's see if we can just import our data straight from the SD card. I've never used this software before, so I apologize if everything's all um, disorganized as I'm trying to <laughs> figure out how this shit works. Oh, here we go. Add clip. And let's see. Let's import a couple of these clips just for starters, just to test everything out. All right, let's pull this into the timeline. Like that. I think that's how that works. And we should be able to play it. Oh! Why, why is that audio all choppy and everything? That's not good. I'm thinking 1080p might be a little bit too much for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, we might have to try 720p instead. And if that still doesn't work, then we might have to go for the bare minimum 480p. Because yeah, with how laggy that is, it's going to be really <laughs> difficult to edit this video. Uh. Oh well, we'll figure something out. Although, alternatively what we could do is just power through how laggy it is and see if it'll render out correctly. Let's try that. Oh dear lord. This is going to take forever. I don't have time for this. This is only like a 15 second clip. <laughs> oh boy. I don't think this is going to work at 1080p. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think we need to move down to 720p. <laughs> oh boy. Because, yeah, I can't wait an hour and 10 minutes for a 15 to 20 second video. Just imagine if it was like a half hour long. Imagine how long that would take. Jesus Christ. Abandon ship! Abandon ship! Oh crap. And also the pie just froze. So... Yep. 720p it is. I'm sorry Raspberry Pi. I don't mean to do this to you. Eh, that hurt a little bit. Okay, so now we're recording in 720p. Hopefully, that'll be easier on the Pi. <laughs> Keyword hopefully. Let's power the Pi back on. Let's take this 720p test footage and plop it into KDEN Live and see if there's any improvement. And also, just in case the SD card reader and the fact that it's using USB might be an issue, I just decided to import the test clip right onto the Raspberry Pi, just to make sure that we're not running into any um, possible um, video lagging issues. So let's open up uh, KDN Live one more time, import the clip, and see if it plays back with no problems. Takes one hell of a long time to load though. Oh my god, why is everything so small and all crunched up? Uh, how, how do I readjust that shit? Because originally, I had the Pi set to 720p because everything was too small. But, KDEN Live was running into some issues running at a resolution that low, so the interface was like way too scrunched together. So I ended up switching it back to 1080p, but now <laughs> everything's still scaled to how it was in 720p. Um, let's see. How do I, how do I change that? Let's see, what's this do? Oh, that only zooms out the timeline. That's not helpful. Oh, there we go. 
I can readjust the size of this, but <laughs> I can't readjust the size of the preview window. Okay, let's see if we make that smaller. And let's see. Make it like that. Hmm. Yeah, I seriously cannot figure out how to get that preview window bigger, so we're just going to have to deal with it for now. Oh well. Alright, let's go to Project, Add Clip. There's our test clip. Import that shit. Yeah. And then drag it into our timeline. And let's see. Let's see if it fixed the problem. Click Play. Um, I mean, it's it's a little better, but for some reason the audio is still skipping really bad. That's really weird. Let's see, what happens if we scrub through the timeline? I wonder if that affects our performance at all. And throw it into the KDE. Let's see. Oh, it, may <laughs> it makes the audio way worse when I scrub through the timeline. Well, that's, that's annoying. It's weird because I had this exact same clip playing in VLC player and it played just fine. Here, let, let me show you. Let's power the Pi back on. Yeah, see, and it plays perfectly fine. So why the hell can it not play in KDE and live without any lag. <sighs> you know what this means. We're gonna have to bump all the way down to 480p and if it's still laggy, we're either just gonna have to give up or just deal with the shitty performance. <sighs> okay, so now we're all the way down to 480p. <clears throat> Ugh. Uh, let's hope that's enough to warrant us better performance. Uh, here we go again. Once more with feeling. Oh, please work. Please work. I'm going to be so pissed if it doesn't. Import the clip. And drag it into our timeline. And click play. Okay, so now we're all the way down to 480p. Yes! Huh. It's finally not laggy. Although we're still at 480p, so the video is going to look like complete garbage, but hey, I mean, it, it plays perfectly fine. We can just, we can scrub through the video. I mean, it still lags a little bit at first, but then after a, after a couple seconds, it's perfectly fine. Okay, shut up, shut up me. I'm trying to talk. But yeah. Bad news is that it's 480p, so it's gonna be blurry as hell. The good news is that we can still edit something on this thing. So tell you what, um, I'm going to make some more footage. I'm going to plop it in here, do some editing, let you guys know if there's any issues along the way, and then render out the clip and show you the final product. Let's do this. Okay, so I just got done editing the video and I'm just about ready to render it out. Um, there were a few issues. Um, I noticed that even though the audio plays perfectly fine, the video plays at like 10 FPS. And I added in some um, video effects just to see how it would handle that. And it <laughs> basically plays the video at like one FPS. 
So suffice to say, adding in video effects is going to slow the pie to a crawl. But that's only a preview mode. That might change if we end up rendering out the video. So let's do that. Let's try MPEG-4 in um, old TV definition slash DVD. So let's try that. Render to file. And hopefully it shouldn't take <laughs> an eternity. <laughs> wow, that's a lot better compared to like two hours that it would take to render in 720p. <laughs> yep, that's, that's a lot better. Um, that's, that's not good. I went to go check on it to see how it was doing and all of a sudden the screen just goes blank. That's concerning. I mean, it's still doing something so it hasn't completely frozen. Um, I'm going to give it a little while longer before I end up pulling the plug on this because yeah, I, w I want to see the finished product, damn it. I want this to work. Oh, well, it's back, but now the pie has completely frozen. I think we're going to have to pull the plug on this one, folks. Dang it, I was really hoping this was going to work. I'm really sorry, pie. You're just not cut out for this kind of work. Wow, that was <laughs> disappointing to say the least. So, can the Raspberry Pi 3 handle video editing? No, absolutely not. It fails at 1080p, 720p, and even frickin' 480p. That's sad. My guess is the problem lies with the lack of RAM on this thing. This only has one gigabyte of RAM, and I feel like that's just not enough to do anything productive with video editing. If we had a lot more RAM, especially on a Raspberry Pi 4, things might be a little bit more doable. Another problem lies with the processor. This is a Model B, so it doesn't support overclocking, unfortunately. I would have to have a Model B Plus to do that. If this thing did support overclocking, that might make things a little easier. But even then, even though it's a quad-core processor, it's essentially a foam processor, so there's only so much that you can do with it. And before you ask, because this thing failed each and every time I tried to edit a video on it, we're not even going to try to show off what the video would look like on the Dell Vostro 270 and my HP ProBook. It's just not worth it. It's just not worth the comparison. So, if you have stuck out long enough to watch this disappointing video, thank you for watching and hopefully next time we'll have an experiment that'll actually work.